Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist. Today I wanted to talk to you about um, natural anticoagulants. Um, now, as you know, I've done a lot of videos on atrial fibrillation uh, and I have explained in uh, my previous videos that people who have this condition called atrial fibrillation uh, and who are above the age of 65 or who have associated comorbidities such as diabetes, high blood pressure, heart failure or vascular disease are at a higher risk of having strokes. And, and therefore, it is recommended that these patients take uh, anticoagulants, also known as blood thinners, uh, to reduce the risk of stroke. The idea being that in patients who have atrial fibrillation, uh, blood does not move as effectively within the heart. And it is thought that this blood not moving uh, promotes stasis of the blood. The blood can therefore stagnate and form a blood clot, and that blood clot could break off, get dislodged, and go to the brain and cause a stroke. And therefore, if you take something that reduces the likelihood of blood clotting, i.e. an anticoagulant, then uh, even though the blood may stagnate, th there's a less likelihood of clot forming and therefore a less likelihood of having stroke. And actually, when you consider the anticoagulants, which are at the moment the, the pharma produced anticoagulants are warfarin or some of the newer agents called NOAX or DOAX, so Xarelto, Pradaxa, Eliquis, Lixiana, when you look at them, uh, they reduce the risk of strokes in patients with atrial fibrillation by about 60%, and therefore they're recommended. The problem with um, any anticoagulant is obviously it's delaying clotting of the blood. So if you are unlucky enough to sustain a bleed somewhere, then you are more likely to bleed for a prolonged period of time, which could be dangerous. In addition, sometimes you the anticoagulant itself could promote a spontaneous bleed, uh, either in the brain or in, in the uh, stomach, and that can be dangerous. So a lot of people um, are put off by the risks of this, and of course a lot of people uh, don't like the idea of taking another sort of pharmaceutical compound. So a lot of people come to me and say, look, why can't I take a natural agent? Nature gives us many agents which are anticoagulants, ginger, garlic, turmeric, uh, motherwort, natokinase, why can't I take one of those? Because they have been, they also reduce clotting of the blood and therefore why can't I take this instead of taking warfarin or one of the NOAX? Um, and so I thought I'd do a little a video on this, okay? Uh, in, I've done a video on this in the past but I thought I'd try and explain it a little bit better. The first thing to understand is that the reason we take these agents is first and foremost because they have been shown in big studies to reduce the likelihood of having strokes. We take, we think that they reduce the likelihood of having strokes by reducing the clotting of the blood. Okay, the problem with an individual person is that if you take any agent which somehow reduces or is purported to reduce your risk in the future, you will never know whether that agent is working for you or not. Because the agent, all it's supposed to do is it's supposed to reduce the risk of having a stroke. Now, how do you know as an individual person that by taking this agent, you have definitely prevented the stroke from happening. How do you know that that you wouldn't have had the stroke even without the medication? You can't be sure, okay? So we cannot be confident of the efficacy of an anticoagulant in terms of stroke prevention just by our own experience. We there have, therefore have to look at population studies. We therefore have to look at studies which have looked at people just like us uh, and given them the anticoagulant and given them uh, a placebo and compared two groups. So you have to rely on population studies. And then what happens is when you look at these population studies, you find that actually the group, the population that is taking the anticoagulants, uh, in general, more people haven't had strokes after a certain number of years compared to the group that took placebo but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that every patient in this population will not have had a stroke and every popular person in the population taking the placebo will have had the stroke some people in this population um, will probably not have there'll probably be more people in this population 
that will not have had the stroke compared to the population uh, compared to the number of people in the uh, population taking the placebo agent so you have to look at studies which are studying large populations uh, and and in those studies the agent has to have been tested to be confident that that agent is actually reducing strokes so whilst there are some natural occurring anticoagulants the big problem we face is that they have not been studied in big population studies you see the problem is when you're studying things like this you need a really really large number of patients in your study to be able to be confident that you're going to see the outcomes that you're expecting and therefore if you don't have that data then how can you be confident that this agent although it may thin the blood it may prevent uh, clotting of the blood how can you be confident that that actually will definitely reduce strokes you see so what i'm trying to say is let's think of seat belts in a car okay taking an anticoagulant is a little bit like a seat belt in a car you wear a seat belt not because it's a seat belt you wear it because it is something that has been shown to prevent the risk to reduce the risk of injury in an accident right that is the ultimate goal that's what you're trying to achieve if someone came to me and said look here's a new seat belt try this one obviously i would want to know has this been studied and has this seat belt been shown to be effective if someone has an accident if it hasn't been shown to have been effective then it would be uh, foolish of me just to take it for face value that it's a seat belt yes it's a seat belt but ultimately I'm not wearing it just because it's a seat belt I'm wearing it because somewhere someone has done some research to say that this seat belt has been tested out in say so many road traffic accidents and people who wore the seat belt did better than people who didn't wear the seat belt uh, and you need that kind of data to feel confident that what you're taking may have some benefit so whilst natural anticoagulants um, uh, may thin the blood you cannot unless you have big population studies be confident that these uh, will reduce the risk of strokes you cannot go by anecdotal evidence you cannot go by you know my my friend has been taking it and he's been fine well he's just one person what do you how do you know that he would have had the stroke if he hadn't been taking it you don't know you need to study say 10,000 people like him and then see how many people have a stroke on that group and compare that to a uh, anticoagulant such as warfarin etc and see how many people have a stroke and if you have that research and if you find that your natural anticoagulant is as effective then it's a very reasonable to thing to take the anticoagulant but the point I'm trying to make is don't take it because it has anticoagulant properties take it because it has been shown to reduce strokes an example of this is aspirin okay aspirin will uh, promote bleeding so if you take aspirin and you cut yourself you're more likely to bleed it's an antiplatelet so aspirin actually causes as much bleeding as some of the newer agents like eloquis however when you study aspirin uh, it doesn't seem to prevent strokes to the same extent as the uh, as the anti as warfarin or the novel um, the noax or the doax so aspirin has only been shown to reduce the risk of stroke by 20 percent whereas warfarin and the noax have been shown to reduce the risk of stroke by 60 percent how do we know this by studying big populations uh, and that is the big problem with natural anticoagulants so i hope this helps i'd love to hear from you please uh, feel free to leave a comment uh, and if you like this video, please consider sharing it uh, and subscribing to my channel, which is Your Cardiology on YouTube. Um, now, finally, uh, I wanted to make you aware that we're doing a seminar in New York. It's called the Heart Health Weekend Seminar. It is for patients. It is done in um, complete patient friendly, non no jargon language. Um, I'll be there. I'll be talking about AF. I'll be talking about topics and POTS and pretty well much anything you want to talk about um, anything you want me to talk about if you happen to be there I am also offering free one-on-one -on -one consultations so if you're there and you want me to go through your case and talk to you and give you some advice then I would be happy to do that free of charge uh, but uh, places are going fast and if you want to reserve your space please consider visiting www.hearthealthweekend.com thank you so much all the best